clustering. The issue is K needs to be hard coded as input to the K means clustering algorithm. And uh, there is no scientific approach to how the K can be approached. So in such circumstances, we actually follow uh, two variants of uh, more generic approaches of what we would like to call as hierarchical clustering. In hierarchical clustering, we don't predefine in K, but instead follow either a top-down approach or a bottom-up approach to formation of clusters. And then depending upon the visual appeal or the kind of cluster uh, topologies we can decide, what would be a good K where to stop the cluster formation. In a top-down approach, what we usually do is we take all the data as one cluster to start with. Then you suppose start with breaking it into two clusters. So you form the next stage two clusters by means of say two means clustering. Then you run two means clustering on the second one again. Then you can form two clusters here and two clusters here. Again, two clusters here, two clusters here. And if you find that some cluster in the middle is uh, very sparse and does not have to use a good number of you know spread of uh, data points, you can not decide to do clustering there. So in terms of top-down clustering, you start from all the nodes in one cluster, break it into say two or three, I don't know, three two or three, then each one again is further broken down into two or the other partition can also be made into two. The top-down clustering is basically thus a top-down decomposition of a large cluster into smaller and smaller clusters by continuous application of k-means on each sub cluster, each new cluster as derived from the previous step. So what happens in top-down clustering is it is in our hand just to decide whether we want to go or stop further division of one cluster into more subclusters or not. This is, I would say, not so rigorous or uh, very subjective depending upon how clusters turn out at each step. But it's not necessary that at each stage, for each cluster, you go back and do the two means clustering or three means clustering as you decide. So top down is one such approach where you don't have prior knowledge of what is a good set of clusters which is useful for the target problem. On the other hand, we have a far more scientific approach to doing a bottom up clustering. And in doing bottom-up clustering, we use a technique known as the program. So when you say dendrogram, dendrogram is basically a visual tree formed by coalescing data points to form clusters as we go along. Suppose we have a lot of data points in the original data. So in bottom up, we initially assume that each original point is a separate cluster. And then what you do is you iteratively kind of merge the two nearest clusters into one. And that is symbolically represented by taking the two closest points, let's say C1 and C2 are the closest among all of them. So we form now a joint cluster between C1 and C2 and this becomes one cluster. So there are now 
11 minus 1, 10 clusters at this stage. Now suppose we find that the next shortest distance is between say C9 and C10. C10. So this now becomes 9 minus 1, 8 clusters. Like that we can go on finding out the two nearest clusters. I don't mean point, but nearest clusters. So for example, it's possible that the next distance is between this cluster and this. So you may just join this like this. So the height determines at what point the cluster was formed. And we can just go on formation, forming the clusters like this based on this notion of at each point, the shortest distance, whatever pair of clusters is at the shortest distance, you join them at the height at the right moment. So the data you do, you do it at the higher level. So the way it works out is ultimately it is possible that you may form a cluster which is looking something like this. So this is basically an iterative formation of the tree of joining two clusters at any point based on the notion of two shortest distance clusters. And this diagram when it's formed is known as dendrogram. So dendrogram is basically a visualization of bottom up clustering based on the notion of two closest clusters merged at each step. So when you say two closest clusters, we need to understand then that there is a semantics of two closest clusters. The two closest clusters are determined by how the distance between clusters is measured. Intercluster distance is measured in multiple formats. They are known as the linkage type. So the intercluster distance based on linkage can be measured in four different ways. One, you can say is simple where you say that you want to take one cluster and find out the distance between the farthest elements or the farthest distance possible between two elements in the two clusters. That forms a simple linkage. What simple linkage based intercluster distance measure tries to give is it gives clusters which form long chains because you're talking about long distances. On the other hand, linkage can also be known as complete linkage. Complete linkage is basically where you're talking about instead of farthest distance, you look at the closest distance between any two clusters. With the two closest points, you find the distance and use that for finding out which has the least distance in terms of complete coverage. Or you can take something known as an average distance. When you say average distance, it is basically take the distance between every point, every point between the two clusters and take the average of that. That becomes the measure of the distance between two clusters. Or you can just simply say that instead of all of that, I just compute the centroids of both. So this is the centroid, this is the centroid, I just take the distance between these two. So depending upon the intercluster distance measure you try to look at for measuring which are the two closest clusters, the shape of the you know, dendrogram changes. But what typically has been observed is complete or average gives a good measure in terms of narrow compact you know, form of clusters which are close to each other whereas simple gives slightly spread out and long chain form of coverages. So what now having formed the dendrogram, dendrogram, we now have the luxury of finding out what is the right number of clusters you would like to work with. That depends on which horizontal line you want to intersect. Suppose you want to intersect the problem at this point. So here we talk about four clusters. On the other hand, suppose you want to do it at this point. This form five clusters. You go at slightly lower, it forms six clusters. 
So depending upon where you intersect the bottom of formed dendrogram, you can now decide what is the number of clusters that is formed. So now we see that we have now a very structured and scientific approach to formation of clusters in the concept of K means clustering and give the K which you decide as a means to form the K means clustering. So what the scene is in terms of hierarchical clustering, while top down is a top down recursive decomposition by the forming K means at each level, hierarchical by a bottom up using the notion of dendrogram gives a more scientific approach. One thing is you will decide what is the intercluster mechanism you would like to use to basically find out what two closed clusters mean when you're forming the dendrogram. So dendrogram is technically very important because height represents what is the order in which the clusters were coalesced to form on the cluster, joint cluster. So the lowermost will form first, next to the next highest, next highest, next highest. So if you see the highest is the one where the last cluster coalition is formed. So it's important to understand that dendrogram is a scientific approach to formation of clusters for determining the right K. And so that solves a major problem in determining the K in clusters.